Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a first impression and a wear test on this foundation right here. This is the Revlon Color Stay Makeup for Normal to Dry Skin. I'm basically going to be showing you how I apply it and how it wears throughout the rest of the day. So I'll be doing maybe two check-ins to let you know how the foundation is holding up, everything like that. So really quick, I just want to read you what it says on the Revlon website. America's number one foundation, now with a mess-free pump and SPF protection. In 35 shades for every skin tone and type, flawless demi-matte coverage that lasts up to 24 hours. Comfortable, lightweight formula specifically made for normal or dry skin to provide a smooth, perfected look. So there's a few different features here. They're like bullet points. It says perfect demi-matte finish for up to 24 hours. We'll see. 13 beautiful, long-wearing shades, buildable to full coverage, contains hyaluronic acid to hydrate skin over time. It is oil-free and it has SPF 20. Now, if you watch my videos, you know, you're like, girl, why did you try the normal to dry one? Aren't you oily? Yes, I am oily. They didn't have my shade in the combination oily version. And I am not one of those oily girls that wants to suck all the oil out of my skin. I really don't mind that I have oily skin. I don't mind a dewy or foundation. So I just went for the one for dry skin. So it does say that this has SPF 20. So I will go ahead and do a flash test later in the video after I show you how I apply it to see if there's any white cast flashback in the photo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get right into it. If you wanna see how this foundation applies, then just keep on watching. All right, so I have already moisturized my skin and I have also primed. I always, always, always prime. I like to use primers when I do first impression type of videos. I use the e.l.f. Blemish Control Face Primer. I think it's supposed to counteract redness or even out your redness. I don't find that it does. I just think that it makes a very nice, clean, blank canvas to work off of. So I already applied this off of camera. I prefer to apply foundation with a damp sponge. This is my Real Techniques sponge. So I'm going to use this to apply foundation on half of my face and then I will use this flat top kabuki on the other side. This is from Real Techniques as well and it's called their buffing brush. Both of these are clean and hopefully this matches me. I'm so nervous it's not going to match. I'm just going to put one pump here on my sponge and we'll see how I do with that much. It's blending out very nicely. It is fuller coverage than I was expecting. Every full coverage foundation that I've ever tried, I never like it because the coverage never compares to my L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte coverage. That's like hella full coverage. The color actually looks like a good match to me. So I definitely love the finish of it. This is for normal to dry skin and I do have oily skin. So maybe I'll be looking a little extra dewy especially by the end of the night i'm sure i'll be a greasy free mess so i do really love the finish of it it looks very natural but you can see all of my acne through it all of it it definitely did a great job of evening out my skin tone but again it's not as full of coverage as my l'oreal one we'll see if we get better coverage with the brush and this is one pump on this half of my face so i'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing one pump on my brush and we'll see if i can make this go further on the other side of my face I can't stay on applying foundation with a brush because it just, no matter what I do, it always looks streaky. It's looking really nice on camera, I think. I just, you can see all my acne through it, so I'm going to see if I can build it up, build up the coverage. Because I do build up the coverage anyway with my L'Oreal one, my Holy Grail. I usually do, you know, one layer all over my face and then I build up the coverage on my cheeks because that's my problem areas. It's looking really, really awful on my nose. I have a hard time making any foundation look good on my nose, so that's, I guess, to be expected. So I definitely prefer the side that I used the sponge. It looks like a little bit more of a natural finish. I'm not noticing any extra coverage on the side that I used the brush. So I'm gonna go in with my sponge again and try to build up the coverage on my cheek and my nose areas. The consistency of the actual foundation itself looks pretty normal it's not like super runny serum-y but it's also not super thick or moussey or anything like that it's a pretty average consistency okay definitely getting more coverage on the second layer so i'm gonna use a sponge on the other side of my face as well you definitely still can see a lot of my imperfections but it is buildable so that's a good thing this color definitely matches better than my holy grail l'oreal I could even go for another layer on my cheeks. I am someone who likes full, 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 full coverage because I do have such problematic skin. This foundation, I can already tell, 
I mean, we'll see how it wears. But as for right now, I would say that this foundation would be great for people who just want to even out their skin tone, maybe have a blemish or two to cover. Maybe not for someone like me who has cystic acne that they want to cover up completely. I am. I'm going to try to layer up one more time on my cheeks. One more pump. All right, so I went ahead and zoomed you in a little bit, so hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. You can still definitely see. It's not bad, it's not bad at all, but like I said, I'm comparing it to my L'Oreal Pearl Matte. This is two layers and you can definitely still see all my acne peeking through, but it's also not getting cakey or too heavy when I layer it. So I am actually going in for a third layer just to see how full of coverage I can make this. Okay, yeah, it's definitely building up really nicely. It's not getting cakey or thick or anything like that. It looks really, really nice on my forehead. My forehead is the one and only part of my face that has no blemishes, maybe a little bit of texture, but there's no cystic acne on my forehead. And it's looking really, really good on my forehead. Nice and smooth. And I like the finish. It's not super dewy or anything like that. It's just a nice natural satin finish. I did not use a pore filling primer. And you can definitely tell my pores are nice and nice and out there. I feel like it's kind of sinking into my pores a little bit, which isn't a great sign for the rest of the day. Hopefully it won't continue to do that. I am going to go off of camera and do the rest of my makeup. I will be setting this with a powder. I do have pretty stinking oily skin. I always set my foundations with a powder. So I'm going to go ahead and go off of camera and do the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. Now that the rest of my makeup is on, I don't love it. It is really, really sinking into my smile lines which happens with all all and any foundations it's looking a little like patchy I guess up above my brows which could just be because my brow hair is growing in so that's not necessarily the foundation's fault my main my not my one and only but my main gripe with it is that it's just not full enough coverage for me I'm gonna try and zoom you in really really close so that you can see how much of my imperfections you can still see through the foundation because from far away like I'm looking at my viewfinder and it really does not look that bad and my other observation is that my pores look atrocious this foundation sunk into my pores so so badly I did not use a pore filling primer keep that in mind so the next time I try this foundation I will absolutely be using a pore filling primer right here on my problem pore areas on my forehead it looks okay except for right above my eyebrows like I said it looks pretty good on my forehead and it looks really good on my nose which is surprising me because I have such a hard time getting product to stick to my nose because of how oily it is I'm actually really surprised at how well it looks on my forehead because of this eye look I spent a lot of time with my eyebrows up like this so I was ready for the foundation to you know sink into those wrinkles which it did a little bit it's just not as bad as I thought it was gonna be bronzer blush and highlight blended in nicely on top of it I did set this with a powder I set it with my RCMA no color powder but I just can't get over how you can still see all of my acne so I think that the bronzer and the blush and the highlight doesn't look all that great because you can still see everything underneath it I am going to go ahead and do a flash test so we'll see if there's a white cast Honestly, I think I am seeing a bit of a white cast. My face looks super duper white. Now keep in mind, I am unbelievably fair. But this is like, I look ghostly. You can't tell that I'm wearing any bronzer at all. So with that being said, it's not a horrible photo. I don't look completely white, but maybe if you're gonna go out at night and you'll be taking pictures with flashes, you know, maybe not the best foundation for that. So also, if you want to know what makeup I'm wearing on the rest of my face that I did off camera, I will write it all down below in the description box. So if you're wondering about anything on my face, just go ahead and check there first. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go about my day and I will do probably about two check-ins, one halfway and then one at night before I'm about to take off my makeup. So I will see you in a few hours. All right, so the foundation has been on for four hours. It is 4.30 now, if you can see that. Please ignore the mess that's happening behind me. I just got done painting my nails. So I don't really have any more major complaints. The only things that I am seeing are things that I noticed earlier anyway. My smile lines are looking hella visible. The creasing around my nose, like around my nostrils is absolutely unreal. And my pores, again, just look terrible so all the complaints that I have are complaints that I noticed earlier and have just worsened maybe this much it hasn't rubbed off or faded off or anything like that but it is definitely creasing it's this region really that looks terrible my smile lines it's kind of kicking up here on my chin okay so here we are I'm sure you're closer than you ever wanted to be to my face I don't know if you can tell 
but right under my nose is creasing terribly. You can totally see how bad it's caking up and sort of separating on my smile lines and my mustache area. Look how bad it's creasing. It's creasing so bad. This always happens to me with foundations. It's not usually this bad though. Now, of course, please bear in mind that this foundation is for normal to dry skin. I don't have those things, so that very well could be why I'm having all these issues. I don't know if you can see, you can see my pores. Look on this side. You can totally see each individual pore. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that I did set this foundation with a setting spray. I always set my foundation with a setting spray. So I did set it with the Maybelline Master Fix. This is a good one from the drugstore. I do this not only to prolong the wear of my makeup, but also to sort of take away some of that powdery look that really full coverage foundations can give you. As I said, I don't know if I would classify this as a full coverage foundation. If you are the average person with not much to cover, then yes, it could be classified as a full coverage foundation. On me, it's more of a medium coverage, maybe like a low medium coverage. The more I wear it, the more I'm sort of trying to think about what I could do and ways I could use it. And I think what I would do is use my L'Oreal Infallible Pro Mattes and put a layer of that all over my face and then put a layer of this all over my face because this one matches more than my L'Oreal one. And then I would also set those foundations with a powder foundation. I know it seems so ridiculously unnecessary to take all those steps. So with all this being said, it in no way looks terrible terrible. My, my face from far away, it doesn't look all that bad. Just those problem areas that I mentioned look really, really bad. And also, like I said, I think that this foundation just probably doesn't really work all that well on my skin tone. I think that if you have dry or normal skin, like it suggests, or if you have not so problematic skin like I do. And with that being said, I could probably get away with spot concealing before using this. But I am excited to try to make this work in conjunction with maybe spot concealing my L'Oreal foundation and setting it with a powder foundation. So those are my thoughts right now. That's where I'm at. And I will check back in with you one more time tonight. All right, so it is now 8.30 at night. If you can see that, I have a messy bun going on. I'm so ready to peel off these lashes and go to sleep. So the foundation has been on for a little bit over eight hours. I would say it doesn't look much worse than it did at my last check-in. It hasn't rubbed off anymore and I did take a nap earlier. And so I was laying on this side of my face. So if any of it is rubbed off, that's probably why. My smile lines still are bad. My upper lip and right under my nose around the creases on my nose. My forehead is creasing pretty bad. But other than that, it really does not look all that bad. So this foundation is definitely not my favorite. I do prefer my L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte, but there's certain things that I can do to make this work. I do like that this color matches me better than any color I found in the Pro Matte range. This foundation is meant for normal to dry skin. So maybe if I find my shade in the oily version, I should pick that one up and try that one. As far as oil goes right now, I really don't look all that oily. It's not that bad. It's not that I have like chronic oily skin or anything like that. It's just that my oils tend to break through. But again, I wouldn't recommend this for girls who have like super, super oily skin. Like I said, they do have a version for oily skin. My main gripe with this is the fact that it is just not full coverage enough. I prefer my Pro Matte because of its coverage. So if you are the average person with a blemish or two and some redness to conceal, this would be really great for you because it definitely evened out my skin tone really well, but you can still see all my imperfections. With that being said, this is not a bad foundation and I, I still can make this work and I still do plan on using this. It's just that I prefer my Pro Matte, so. So those are my first impressions on the Revlon Color Stay Foundation. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want me to do more of these wear tests, let me know down below. I really hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos of mine and I will see you next time. I didn't use a, f uh, what? All right. oh. <laughs> Your dad's sleeping, come here. 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 Come here.